In the future of open banking powered by APIs and blockchain, where every transaction is instant and without borders, the established finance industry has to transform to stay relevant. In this new world, success involves mastering the strategy of being a connector and investing in building real connections to clients, markets and products with networks and innovative platforms. Well, joining me to look at this in more detail is Lisa Robbins. Lisa is the Global Head of Transaction Banking at Standard Charter. Lisa, welcome to Cybos well, TV. We are in a big area of transaction banking where digitization technology, of course, it's all at the forefront. So what's driving this? You've got the inside take on this. Well, it's a really exciting time. I've been in banking now for a very long time, and I've never seen such exponential change as today. And that change is driven by a number of things. First is the democratization of technology. It's become cheaper, more accessible to um, a variety of people and, and companies. Second is we're in our search for doing better and providing a better customer experience. We are really looking at how we can make our systems more efficient and effective providing a seamless, frictionless approach. So what's driving it is a number of factors. Democratization of technology, the need to provide a better service, and also to take cost out. I'd like to pick up on that idea of the, the democratization of technology as you, as you refer to it. Does that, does that, is that why technology is a disruptor precisely because it's been opened up in a way that we've never really seen it before? I think it's been opened up indeed in a way that we've never seen before, but by the same token, it's opened up in a way that allows creativity, new entrants to come in. And quite frankly, we banks have been, have been living with our legacy systems for such a long time that we can really now look at how we can change. APIs open up new uh, ability to connect multiple parties seamlessly through a single interface. Um, and, and quite frankly, the, the so-called disruptors are really enablers because they've enabled us to think differently and do what we need to do to make our, our banks really fit for purpose for the long term. Because we have one thing that's really important. We have trust, we have customer customers, and we have a full service of, of uh, capabilities. Mm. Removing obstacles, effectively. We're moving obstacles. We're definitely moving obstacles, and we can say it's a new beginning for banks. Mm. And do you think that the introduction of new players into this financial ecosystem creates competition, especially from the fintechs and, of course, big technology? Well, I think of it a little bit um, differently. We used to think, I think a couple years ago at Cybos, it was all about will they eat our lunch? Will those fintechs be there <laughs> and we will be gone by the wayside? Um, uh, uh, Bill Gates said many years ago, banks, banking will be necessary, but bankers won't. Actually, I think that what's happened is the banks are actually becoming the connectors. And when you can become the connector and provide that curated experience for your customer, which open banking or beyond banking, whatever you want to call it, through using technology, you're, you can end up being a winner because if you can provide that best experience, mm. you can keep your customers happy. And from your perspective as a transaction services provider, how are you leveraging new market infrastructure and digital ecosystems to better meet the needs of your corporate clients? Well, we have a few interesting examples that we've launched just recently. One of the key problems, we have to go back to what's the problem? What are the problems we're trying to solve? All these things are great, but solutions don't don't, don't exist on their own. They have to follow a problem. So one of the key problems, let's take trade finance as an example. The physical supply chains have often operated independently of the financial supply chains. So you have um, like a SAP or Reba with whom we have a, a partnership. They have been providing everything that is necessary for a buyer to procure and pay on a, on a single platform. But what if you could add in the financial side of it? What if access to finance was on a single seamless platform? Seamless integration. You bringing the financial supply chains and the physical mm. supply chains together in one single integration. A lot easier. And, by the way, it's better for the real economy because access to financing is really important to suppliers, their suppliers, suppliers, the suppliers, 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 and so on. More efficiency, in other words. It's more efficiency, more access, and um, then the spread of, of uh, payments very quickly down the, down the chain enables um, the real economy, mm. economy and communities to survive. Of course, and of course technology is the key to this. And when you look at Asia, it does appear to be leading the way in terms of technological innovation. Why is that the case? And what do you think that 
other geographies can learn from the Asian example? Well, Asia, Asia has a number of things going for it. It has a large population, mm. well, a large young population that's really, really attuned to um, using and adopting new technologies to start with. Secondly, it doesn't have the same legacy that we've had um, in, other in other parts of the world. It's not beholden to a uh, long a history of, of um, big systems. Mm. Um, second, thirdly, um, we have certain countries where there's been an imperative to drive financial inclusion and therefore they have set the rails in place and the regulations in place to really push forward with uh, digitization. Take for example India, um, where the, the country has um, rolled out, the regulators have rolled out IMPS and other, other rail, rails on, on which other things can develop. In China, a different situation. In China, we have um, large platform companies like Alibaba mm -hmm. paving the way and then, and then others um, coming in. And then take other, other examples, Hong Kong, Singapore. Uh, fast payments are an imperative to make sure that money gets, gets to the end user very quickly, the beneficiaries quickly. And when we look at the landscape, I mean, it has changed enormously because you've had the fintechs coming up and also that in turn has really pushed the regulatory drive towards open banking. So what's going to be the key to succeeding in an open banking landscape? Because so much is happening and as we yeah. know, I keep on saying it, so I'm not actually going to apologize for repeating this, but technology is not static and it feeds through to that financial ecosystem. So we have a couple of things that we really need to think about. One is our cultures. Um, in order to ensure that we can really be at the forefront. Uh, our, our cultures have to be adaptable and flexible. And there's a lot of work going on to ensure that we are all learning cultures. Mm. Secondly, we can't be afraid of change, right? A change has been, change is just, it's a, it's a constant. When I think of the beginning of my career to the first major change from te telex to fax, I mean, that period was a well, really long time. Telex to fax. <laughs> telex to fax, okay, I'm dating myself, <laughs> right? And then fax. But, I, but I've dated myself by acknowledging this as well, telex to <laughs> well, fax. Well, do you remember the Palm Pilot? <laughs> yes. Right? And it was beam me up, Scotty, by yeah. exchanging things, and now we're using these little uh, exactly, gadgets, exactly. right? Back to the serious point. Um, in, in a world where open banking or beyond banking or curated banking is the wave of the future, we have to be comfortable sharing, collaborating. It's not just about proprietary, our own systems. We have to, co we have to be comfortable co-creating. We have to be comfortable being on somebody's platform and being the experience on somebody's platform just as much as we are curating our own platforms and bringing others on. It isn't an either or. It's mm. a... It's a it's a both. And that justifies the synergy that you referred to earlier between the, the, the new tech, fintech, and the banks, that it's not a case of one having the lunch of the other. They need to be together on this. They're singing from the same page, effectively. We're singing from the same songbook. We, we didn't think a few years ago that we were singing from the same songbook, but it's the same song. It's all about customer experience, and the person who can provide, and the company who can provide the best full customer experience will be the successful winner in the long term. And may you stay in harmony forever. <laughs> may we stay in harmony forever. <laughs> Lisa, as ever, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. But that was Lisa Robbins, who is the Global Head of Transaction Banking at Standard Charter. Thank you so much for joining us on Cybos TV with your excellent insights. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.